So coming off the Thanksgiving holiday, are you feeling optimistic? You know, Thanksgiving traditionally has us focus on what we're thankful for and what's happened over the past year. Psychologists almost universally confirm that practicing thankfulness is good for us. I think it's possible for us to connect Thanksgiving with optimism. You know, optimism looks forward rather than backward and expects to have things to be thankful for next year or maybe in the next 10 years. So are you an optimist? If you're an investor, you've already answered that question with at least a qualified yes. As an investor, once you buy an asset, whether it be a stock or bond, you're taking a positive view of the future. You're expecting the stock price to rise and for dividends to be paid, and you're expecting the bond issuing company or government to be able to pay your interest and principal in the years to come. You might feel less optimistic than you'd like. There's always risk to be sure, but a rational investor only puts money they have today at risk if they have a sense of optimism and expectation about that investment being worth more in the future. In a recent podcast, Morgan Housel observed that for many, optimism sounds naive and pessimism sounds smart. Now, why is that? It may have something to do with the way news is collected and reported. In a 2018 article for The Guardian, Steven Pinker wrote, whether or not the world really is getting worse, the nature of news will interact with the nature of cognition to make us think that it is. He continues, news is about things that happen, not things that don't happen. We never see a journalist saying to the camera, I'm reporting live from a country where war has not broken out or a city that has not been bombed, or a school that has not been shot up. As long as bad things have not vanished from the face of the earth, there will always be enough incidents to fill the news. And he continues, that in turn provides an easy formula for pessimists on the editorial page. Make a list of all the worst things that are happening anywhere on the planet that week, and you have an impressive sounding, but ultimately irrational case that civilization has never faced greater peril. Huh. Sound familiar? Why does Pinker call this journalistic skepticism and pessimism irrational? In his book, Enlightenment Now, he comments on how this kind of news diet can keep us in an ignorant pessimism. He writes, quote, and here is a shocker. The world has made spectacular progress in every single measure of human well-being. Here's a second shocker. Almost no one knows about it. Think about medicine. There are plenty of problems yet to be solved. Cancer may be near the top of that list, but the progress made in medicine and improvements in public health over the past 200 years are astounding. Life expectancy has risen. Infant and maternal mortality rates have plummeted. We have insulin to make diabetes manageable, antibiotics to fight off infections, polio and smallpox have been virtually eradicated. We can store human blood to be used to save people who are not yet in desperate need for blood transfusions. An MRI technology allows for diagnosis of so many conditions in the body with images that would have seemed miraculous to doctors just 50 years ago. If you have an illness, you're glad to be alive today versus 25 years ago. You know, economically, life has improved as well. While the world population has grown from under 2 billion to over 7 billion people in the past 120 years, the number of people living in extreme poverty has fallen dramatically in percentage terms from over 60% to under 10%, but also in absolute numbers from over 1 billion persons to just under 700 million in 2022, according to the World Bank. Of course, we want to see that number fall further, but the progress is amazing. Driving some of this change is global gross domestic product, which has quadrupled in the 43 years since 1980. Closer to home, Pinker noted that 100 years ago, Americans spent more than 60% of their income just to meet basic necessities. By 2016, that percentage needed had dropped to below 33%. Years ago, I heard Dan Sullivan, the author and founder of The Strategic Coach, he coined a concept called the gap. The idea was basically that we don't measure personal progress well in our minds because we are almost always focused forward and our ideal future is full of problems yet to be solved. When we solve one problem or reach one goal, we make progress, but now we see more clearly the next obstacle keeping us from our ideal. It's as though the goalposts, our ideal, keep moving away from us. And if we get fixated on those future problems yet to be solved, we forget to celebrate, to be thankful for all the progress we've made so far, the problem solved. We need both the productive desire to keep moving ahead, solving problems, as well as the thanksgiving for past achievements that remind us 
to be optimistic. This can be true on a personal level as well as a global one. So back to our original question, are you an optimist? Does your future expectation include thanksgiving for things that haven't occurred yet? For progress that will take place, for investment returns that will help provide economic independence and the realization of personal goals. You know, when our news feeds are filled with things going wrong, we miss not only the stories of things currently going well, but also the harder to observe incremental improvements that are unnoticeable on a day-to-day -day basis, but that add up over time, compounding into a history of dramatic progress and improvement in the human condition, like we've seen in medicine, in increasing standard of living, and in global market returns. In that same podcast where Morgan Housel affirmed his personal optimism about future progress in spite of setbacks that are sure to occur, he said that optimists still need to justify their optimism both to themselves and to those they hope to encourage. I couldn't agree more, which is why I continue to share this idea from David Booth, where he says, educated optimism is the best antidote for anxious uncertainty. By becoming educated about the past, we avoid the naivete that doesn't stand up under the pressure of present uncertainty. Long-term optimism is justifiable when we look at history instead of headlines. You know, thanks for joining us today. If you'd like to contact us with a question, you can do so at our website, www.fostergrp.com. We like to produce these things with comments from you and questions that you may have, so please let us know what they might be. Until next time, remember, educated optimism is justifiable and a great antidote to anxious uncertainty.